Welcome back to Sunless Sea. I am currently at the Iron Republic, and what I'm going to do now is head south down here and then just go east along the coast, hitting up all these places that I haven't been to for a while. Restock on supplies at Adam's Way, since I don't need to restock on fuel, since I just bought a ton here. And then go north to the Isle of Cats and turn in my prisoner and see what they want to do from there. My offering to the king. So, let's get going. Feels nice to have so much fuel and just not have to worry about it. Please leave me alone. Is that snow? Or is that like a dust cloud? Oh god, it's coming. Um, I don't think I want to go into that. I want to go over here, but that's where the thing's coming at me from. Thank god it turned around. Okay. I think that's a dust storm. I don't know. I mean, those particles don't look like dust, but that looks like dust. I'm pretty sure the cold only comes from the north. I don't think it comes from the south. I'm pretty sure down here it's supposed to be dusty. Hmm. I don't actually know what this place is here. Oh, that's a grand geode. I don't think there's anything I can actually do here. They're very secretive. Jesus. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was totally looking at the thing with 500 hit points and... Ow. It's okay, just one damage. That's actually the first time I've ever taken damage by hitting anything. Wow. Well, I think that's pretty good. It took me about 35, 35 episodes to actually hit something. I can sell my Memento Moria to them. No. Let's get a port report. What else can you do here? Speak with someone in authority. Hmm. Ask the Commodore for a defense against sunlight for Aceville. That's right, if you can find something to... defeat or capture the sunlight or whatever, you can establish a colony there. Hmm. What does it take? Need vital intelligence? I have it. <laughs> Seven crew. I have a feeling the crew aren't going to come back to you. No Dawn's Law. 50 supplies. Okay, that's literally impossible to complete for me with my current ship because I can't even hold 50 supplies. Yeah, so this is definitely a late game thing. Requires you to have a pretty late game ship. Or at least the merchant ship. Figurehead of the Eater of Names. I don't even know where you'd get that. Okay, that's not going to happen for a while. Hmm, the Gantz source can be obtained from the Eater of Names near the Chelinate. There's an Eater of Names near the Chelinate? I was just there. I'm glad I didn't encounter it. That doesn't sound pleasant. A Dread Surmise can be assembled by the Alarming Scholar from Seven Searing Enigmas. Oh, that's the stuff where if you turn in Seven Searing Enigmas to the Alarming Scholar... I believe it says she becomes unavailable, which I think means she dies or leaves or something. Yeah, this is a very late game thing. Let's speak to somebody in authority. Not sure what that's going to do. I believe I've done this before. Hmm. I don't know if I did read this before. No, I, I did read this, I think. <laughs> the light, it's pretty. I now have one memoir as a sunstroke. That doesn't sound pleasant. Lost five terror. Okay, memory distant shore. Cool. Yearning, burning. Purchase an element of dawn from the Commodore. <laughs> also 50 supplies. No shop and time to go.
discovered Port Carnelian. You're telling me I've never been here before? That gave it its name? What? I know I've been here before. I mean, it was even revealed on my map. I don't get it. Okay. First thing I want to do is get all this stuff into my spreadsheet. And yes, this is indeed a place where we can buy a casket of sapphires. Ooh, and even dark drop coffee beans. Seems like the south is just, in general, a good place to buy dark drop coffee beans. Yeah. Ooh, right, this is the one place I think I've ever found where supplies are actually cheaper than back in London. Okay, cool. So let me get this stuff in my spreadsheet and I'll be right back. Okay, so it looks like indeed this is a good place to buy a casket of sapphires. So you can actually buy them for 86 here, and you can sell them for 99 at the Chelinate. Where is it? Here they are. Yep, sell for 99 there. Buy for 86 at Port Carnelian for a 13 Echo Profit, which is not bad, but again, most likely not worth it, unless you have a merchant ship. I mean, realistically... Hmm. I mean, realistically, I probably am not going to be, be able to hold more than maybe 20. So the profit margin of 13 on each one, let's just round it to 10. That's only 200 Echo. Not even really factoring in the price of fuel and stuff. Although, granted, the area around here... It's really far from the Chelinate. But... I mean, there are places to refuel around here that aren't too bad. Like, I mean, right here, for example, the fuel is not too bad and the supplies are actually cheaper than they are back at London. So I maybe wouldn't have to have a huge amount of resources, because I wouldn't need to take everything from London just to do this whole run. I could, you know, take the minimum amount necessary. And then just re-get supplies at Adam's Way or Port Carnelian or something, but nah, it's not worth it without a merchant ship. I almost want to get a merchant ship. I mean, it makes sense money-wise, because you can make a significant amount of money doing these trade routes if you had the, the hold space of, what is it, 200 for the merchant ship? But I think it would just be boring. I think it would be boring to be a merchant doesn't sound exciting. Okay, well, anyway, let's check out this place. Lots of stuff to do. So are these all different methods of getting a port report? Because I can only do this if I don't have more than zero port reports. No, I think it is. <laughs> Banned for sapphires in the fungal jungle. Yeah, this is the place with the fungal jungle. We'll get back to that in just a second. Let's talk to a tiger in the blue bazaar, which I think I've done once before. This is, after all, the fungal jungle, the place of talking tigers. The blue bazaar in, uh, is Port Carnelian's great indoor market. Arched, lofty, plush with patterned carpets where the vendors display their wares. Most of all, a wash with gossip. The tiger chats about the banded prince, their supposed monarch, and his palace deep in the jungle. You lever the conversation onto the state of his people. He has no complaints, he says. Not even about the recent reinstatement of the travel restrictions on natives. Nor the report of a tiger killed at the jungle's edge. His tail flicks. Let's visit the tea shop. They import the doilies from London, but the tea is local, blue and smoky. The crumpets are warm, the tablecloths white. You could almost imagine you were back in Vale Garden, except for the tiger lounging on a divan. It laps tea from an azure bowl and complains about the recent nostalgic trend in poetry. Ah yes, this I've read before. 
So we have talking tigers who drink tea and we have a fungal jungle. Do you know what that means? It means I can finally do something that I've been meaning to do for like 10 to 15 episodes. In the jungle, the fungal jungle, the tiger speaks to me. In the jungle, the fungal jungle, the tiger laps his tea. Ah, <sighs> I've been meaning to do that for so long. So, so long. And thank you for uh, to one of the commenters who gave me the idea to do that. Because <laughs> it absolutely works perfectly lyrically. The fungal jungle. That's such an awesome name. Fungal jungle. It's just fun to say. Fungal jungle. Fungal jungle. Well, I still have something awaits me in port. Should I ban for sapphires? Can I sell sapphires here or only buy them? Yeah, you can't sell them. So if I get them, where would I even sell them? There's not that many places where you can actually even sell sapphires. It's not worth it. Nah, I don't have that much hold space. Yeah, I've only got 34 to 40. Most of that's fuel. I want to fill up the rest of it with very cheap supplies. And we are good to go. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see that? Whoops, I just clicked out of the game. I was trying to click on these monsters. Blue Prophets, 500 hit points. Hmm. Yeah. Um. They're beautiful, but... Nah. Nah, man, nah. Nah. I'm just gonna chill here. Look, the only thing I use up by staying here is just supplies. And I can buy more of that right here for very cheap. I'm just gonna calmly wait for them to disperse. Although I have a feeling they're not going to. They're very, very fast. They have 500 hit points. I mean, I could try taking pot shots at them, because if I needed to escape, I could always just come into port and they'll leave me alone. But... I don't want to mess with them. That's not a flack of bats. A uh, flack, flock of bats. It's very different. Those things are so fast. Alright, they're not leaving. I am gonna go around. Hopefully they can't really see anything because they're kinda... in... a shitload of... oh, fucking hell. Okay, <laughs> great. I'm penned in by a fucking flock of... prophets and two vort vortices. Um, so this is fun. I'm not going all the way around. I could try shooting them. They seem to be kind of going away. Oh fuck, you go so slow. You go so slow in this shit. Dear God, get me through. Alright, I can't see them anymore, that's good. My terror's going up like crazy, but just get me through this shit. seems to go on forever. Oh, full speed? Alright, full speed. It's hard to tell when you can go half speed and full speed. Like, there's no clear dividing boundary. Yeah, once again, it's half speed. I don't know if it's the dust or the snow or... Wait, this is ash, isn't it? 
Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, it's ash. It's obviously not snow. Because it didn't make sense for there to be snow and dust. It looks like snow, but ash also looks kind of like snow. But yeah, I'm not sure which one's slowing me down. I don't know if it's the dust or the ash or both. Almost through. Uh, uh. Come on. There we go. Well, that was a bitch. the theme music for this place. Alright, I would not be able to enter if it weren't for the recent news. <laughs> it's either that or a tale of hell from Mount Palmerston. Or an unfinished tale. No idea where you actually get that. Alright, so now once again we have the tree of a single day. The thing that, uh... Let's see, should he actually say it here? By the evening's end it will wither and fall. You must be back on your ship before then. Yes, yeah, so I've got a clock. And that clock is a tree. Now before, I came here to do a quest. And as soon as I did that quest... It kind of, like, used up my entire day, I think, and I had to leave, so I never actually got a chance to do any other stuff. So let's see what else I can actually do here. The options available may change as the day progresses. Hmm. There's bitter curiosities. One echo? That's really cheap. Storyteller. Yeah, so the tree of a single day, no more than four, you have one. So I'm guessing I can do three to four actions before I have to get back. Looks like this is for my port report, I think. A commission? Tree of a single day, two. In Adam's way, the tree of a single day, no more than two, you have one. Okay, so once I've done one thing, I can try to get a commission. Hmm. I need to sit by the tree and let the hours pass. Let's listen to a storyteller. Get a port report. Ignore the gaudy entertainments intended to defraud visitors. Pass the street hawkers. They will only tell you what you want to hear. Shun the tavern gossip, most of which is fabricated by the Mithridate office, the Prester's propagandists. The buzzing of the bees. Climb the stairs, cut into the hill. Sit at the foot of the bee-capped stone columns. They will shield you from the southern mountain heat. Be quiet. Listen. Old storytellers share the shadow. The Prester is on the verge of declaring the Dawn Machine a blasphemy. London's bureaucracy is riddled with the children of the Thief of Faces. An expedition of foreigners recently put to shore to the west, then went south in search of the garden. They were discovered and given to the Red River. <laughs> the Red River? Ugh. Tree of a single day is tall and strong. Its branches stretch over the rooftops. Okay. Well, now I can do the commission. Avuncular Broker. 
his client has a task of modest but scriptural significance. He is conducting interviews. Hmm. <laughs> Catch a nut that falls from the tree of a single day? That's new. A matter of luck. Interesting. Such a fascinating place. Well, let's see what his commission is. He meets you on the balcony of a shoreside coffee house. His handshake is effusive. His smile and cummerbund are broad. He urges you to squares of baklava and a tiny glass of black coffee sweetened with a sprig of mint. I trust you won't mind answering a few questions, he asks, opening a notebook, to ensure we're on the same page, so to speak. The interview is scandalously personal. What business has he to ask such things? Hmm. <laughs> I have to give up a secret to answer truthfully. Or depart immediately. How dare you, sir? Or lie. 24% chance. Okay, well, that's what I've been... That's the reason I've been hoarding my secrets. For quest events like this. Let's do it. An unexpected tactic. He blinks in surprise. Goodness. I must admit. I expected you to lie. Never mind, never mind. Knowing you as well as I do now. He studies his notebook, too embarrassed to meet your eye. I think we can do business. Excellent. You may accept the broker's commission in Adam's way. Okay. We have a blooming relationship. One that hopefully won't die as soon as the tree does. The tree of a single day is flowering. White petals drift across the square. Oh my god, the avuncular broker's little problem quality is now 100. We went from complete strangers to deep personal friends in no time at all. Let's see, is anything new? So I can accept this commission, of course. Still catch a nut. So nothing really new. Other than this, of course, that I just unlocked. Hmm. No more than four, you have three. I think I can only do one more thing. Well, it says no more than four, so once I get to four, I should still be able to do it. Alright, well, let's get his commission. He orders a plate of figs soaked in honey. Tell me, what do you know about the disciples of the Thief of Faces? Doing the Prester's work. Or snuffers to children and Londoners. Awful creatures. Eat candles. Steal faces. Erasing them is a sacrament. An associate of mine recently found one in Port Carnelian, but before he could expose it, he disappeared. Maybe the snuffer got him, or perhaps one of the port's spies. The place is stuffed with them. Your commission is to root out Port Carnelian's snuffer, capture it, bring it back here. I'd like to ask, ask it a question or two. He pops a fig into his mouth. <laughs> My quality is now 200. Okay. Eating candles and stealing faces. Can't say I've ever met one of these creatures. Well, I was just at Port Carnelian. It's very close by, but uh, the journey over there is not exactly pleasant. It's through a shitstorm of ash and dust and very, very powerful creatures. Alright, can I do one more thing? Oh no, they didn't actually eat up one of my... Yeah, they didn't eat up much time. I, I'm still on three. Okay. Um. Hmm. Let's visit an expedition of presbyterate curiosities. For the insignificant price of a single echo, the sober showman will lay the wonders of the elder continent directly at your feet. That sounds like a tourist trap, but sure. The signs advertising his entertainment bristle with exclamation marks. In person, he is more circumspect. Shore leave, grotesquerie. Cabinet of curiosities. Cabinet of curiosities? Isn't that an item I can make? Hmm. 
Let's attend the Cabinet of Curiosities. A sign outside the tent reads, Explore the natural and unnatural. Wonders of the Elder Continent. A shining jewel catches your eye. A shard of the mountain itself claims the stenciled sign. How it blazes. The light is yellow as butter, but cold. You shield your eyes, examining the stone through the gauze of your sleeve. It is a fake. Only glass, set beneath an arrangement of lights and lenses. You complain to the sober showman. He is apologetic, refunding your echo and giving you a mysterious artifact that was excavated by an explorer of his acquaintance. Are those ancient fingerprints pressed into its glassy surface? Hmm. Another ambiguous eolith. The tree of a single day is withered, its gnarled trunk groans. Ew. So, should I go back before? Like, I have a feeling I want to go back to my ship before the tree is fully withered, rather than, like, wait until it does. I mean, there might be a grace period, maybe I can do one more thing, but I'm not going to risk it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, this is something new. Yeah, attend a funeral feast. A public square. A gathering of the bereaved. Uncannily cheerful. A table, shining with cutlery. White china plates. Tall glasses. Hmm. So apparently that's an option that can only be done on the very last... ...stage of the tree. Let's do it. The Replete occupy lofty positions in the Presbyterate's military. Despite their sanguinary past, they dine with the Prester and send their children to be educated at London's university. However, they maintain their traditions of eating their dead. The feasts are held in public. Here in a broad square stretches a splendid table. The departed was only a distant relative, some great aunt or second cousin, and the atmosphere is jolly. Servants carry the deceased over in steaming joints, cooked to perfect, perfect pinkness. A stately mourner stands, already wobbly from wine. Shall I carve? Oh god, okay. Um, I don't think I want to eat. <laughs> Sit at the table as a guest of honor, your veils will increase. That would be nice. What do I need? Unaccountably peckish. So that's how you get unaccountably peckish, isn't it? Or wait a minute. Oh, I need to be unaccountably peckish, one, to even accept an invitation to dine. Steal scraps from the table. <laughs> Maybe that's how I get unaccountably peckish. Okay, I mean, I'm already a vampire that just, um, captured somebody as a prisoner from the Cumian Canal and is taking it to a Tiger King as a gift, an offering. I mean, I'm already pretty freaking stained. I'm not exactly a great person, but I don't think I want to go so far as to start eating people. It's not even guaranteed. 49% chance. I'm just gonna observe. I'm gonna I'm gonna gawk. A plummy anthropologist cranes her neck for a better view. This isn't normal here, you know, she tells you, noticing your interest. The other nations of the Presbyterate think they're crackers. Still, I bet the Prester finds them useful. The threat of imminent cannibalism must facilitate no end of diplomatic negotiations. A salt cellar passes along the table. Napkins dab at mouth corners. The anthropologist is warming to her subject. I hear the practice begins with one of their forebears who sailed into the far north. I may have to take a trip that way. See what it's like for myself. Okay, got a tale of terror. And some terror. 
and the memory of distant shores. And it's time to go back. Let's return. I've already got all this stuff. I do I do have this stuff in my list, don't I? Actually, I don't think I have Adam's Way here. Oh, wait, no, I do. Yeah, I've already got it. Okay. Also not a bad price for Foxfire Candles. Still cheaper than back in London, where they're 40. Hmm. Well, nothing stands out to me as a great price here. Of course, it's got the decent price for fuel and supplies, but yeah, nothing's amazing. Except for Dark Drop Coffee Beans, that's a good price. I believe that's the lowest I've seen, 38. Seems like all the places in the South tend to have that kind of price. Okay, uh, I think it's time to go. Do I need more supplies? Not really. Do I need more fuel? Not really. And I do want some hold space because I have a feeling when I take in my prisoner to be a gift at the Isle of Cats. I have a feeling she's... Zayra's probably going to give me like 50 bajillion supplies again, and I don't want to have to jettison them into the sea. So I want a little bit of room. Yeah, let's go. Should I stop at Visage along the way? I have a feeling if I do, I'm going to be there for a very long time. Because last time I was there, I was there for like a half hour. I wonder if I can do the ceremony again. Hmm. I guess we're about to find out. What in the fuck is that? Oh wait, is that a behemoth dish? Oh, it's a behemoth dish! Come here! I've wanted to kill another one of you for a very long time. I want your mustache. Slow you down. Okay. Yeah, this time, let's harvest its flesh and its mustache. You beautiful, beautiful fish. Two hunting trophies, hell yeah! Wow. Nice. Yeah, I was, I was holding on to the one that I had for Port Cecil, but now I've got two others. And I know there's other places where I've been able to use them, but I didn't want to use it up. Because I wanted to hold on to my one. A grand loss. Take its teeth as trophies, and its bones for corsets. Regrettably, its mustache is singed beyond repair, and will be lost to posterity. For the next three watches, Zaylers are seen in mourning black. <laughs> Everybody wanted his mustache. But it was not to be. And two supplies. Nice. Did they sell anything? No. Once you set foot on Visage, you may be here for a little while, yes. <laughs> Although if I do the same thing as I did before, I suppose I can skip most of the text. Let's do this again. Alright, playing my part. The Assigner of Corpses. I've already done that. There's no reason to do that anymore. Let's check into the Customs House. Yes, I'm talking to the person in the Moon Moth mask. So before I went with the frog, 
I don't want to go with the bat, because apparently the bat dies or something. Let's go with the locust, but what does the locust represent? The locust is for those who seek profit in visage and would carry away as many goods as possible. Alright, so it's the, the mask of greed. Let's go with that. May you find a happy harvest, says Moon Moth. Then, when you have partly turned away, it double knots the ties on its purse, as though you're likely to pick its pockets. Doesn't it know you can see it? Alright, gotta play my part. So I've gotta be greedy. Hmm. Let's go to the flood court. I've already read that. <laughs> Gather coin from the flood court floor. Seems greedy, but it does fit my personality after all. 69%. Let's do it. Ugh, I failed. Take. You wade into the water and begin gathering coins. People watch you from behind their masks. Moon Moth looks uncertain. You're playing the role of Locust flawlessly. But these are sacred. You hesitate for just a moment, your will wavering. And that's enough. The others rush you and drive you out. But you are not made to leave the city, at any rate. Okay, that didn't go so well. Can I go back? No, I can't. It's already time to trade masks with the Moon Moth? Okay. Alright, same thing as before. Now, what did I do before? I know I, I, I like, give an offering to a snake person or something, but was that the Chief Geometer or the Temple of Apis? Or maybe I did both, I don't remember. Let's go to the temple. Hmm. This is new, I think. Yeah, this is new. The Wounded God. In the center of the temple is a black bull with a white diamond on its face. It is tied in place with heavy ropes, and it is wounded in the thigh. From this wound, it bleeds copiously without dying. Ugh. Yeah, this is definitely new. The priests gather around the bowl, capturing its blood in cups. Okay, I'm not playing the Locust anymore. What is... How do I play the Moon Moth? What, what does the Moon Moth act like? Just kind of like... Wise, isn't it? Isn't it just like a wise person, basically? Offer to sell them a new undamaged bowl? No, that that doesn't match my personality of my mask. Hmm. I could try to bandage the bowl. <laughs> I think that I think that would just be shitting all over their tradition, wouldn't it? I feel like the Moon Moth would leave a respectful token of offering. Impeccable. The tokens are small and not very valuable, as it suits your lower rank in the community. The priests arrange them on a table with other small items. As you go out, you pass by the more impressive gifts. Drafting tools from the Chief Geometer. Scales from Jackal. A heap of foreign coins brought home by Crocodile. Okay, not the best gift, but it seems to have worked. Let's visit the House of the Chief Geometer. Oh, yes. The Man in the Cobra Mask. That's... It wasn't a cobra, it was a man in a cobra mask, of course. It's hard to tell in this game. There's freaking talking tigers, who knows? Okay, now let me see if I can remember what I did before. The right thing. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I don't think I did this before, because I don't think I had candles before, but I actually have a candle. Yeah, so I think it was the honey cakes that I did before that worked really well. But I think any option that requires more items would probably be better. 
yeah, let's go with this. The gift is suited to him personally. One can see this by the way that he hesitates regretfully before he performs the rejection that etiquette requires. It was thoughtful, but it is not the gift of Moth to Cobra. Therefore, wrong. Aww. Well, at least I didn't lose the candle, right? Nope, I didn't lose it. Okay, honey cakes. He accepts, he approves, yep. Okay. Um. Wait, what? It's time to leave? I should have gone to the side of the face. When did that happen before? Did it happen when I went to leave, or did it happen before? I guess I used up uh, too much time. I want to go back inside. Uh, I can't. Leave? Lost 10 tear. Damn it, that's it. Hmm. But no, we can do this. I, I did this before. I'm just going to hang out here. And I'm just going to wait till my something awaits me in port returns. Let's see if I can get into the green by getting really close to the shore. Nope, doesn't work. Alright, I'm just going to spin in circles. Do 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 do. I am going inside of that face. What? What? Shit, I just pressed the key for full power. I sure hope my engine doesn't explode. Um... Whoops. Hold on. Where is that button? That is not something you should ever press on the keyboard. You don't need to ever use it that often. Turbo. Press a new key for turbo. How do I unbind? Okay. Uh, left bracket. There. I'm never gonna press left bracket. That's never gonna happen. Okay. Fixed. <laughs> that really shouldn't be bound to a keyboard key. At least not one that's so close to where you press other stuff. Because you almost never need to use that. There we go. Alright, let's do this again. Check in the customs house. Uh, once again, we go to the Locust. Visit the Flood Court once again. Let me attempt to gather coins once again. Ah, I succeeded this time. No one tries to stop you. After a moment, the other locust masks in the room swarm with you. Four and five and six of you together. Scraping up the coins from the bottom of the pool. Working your way along until everything is gone. It is just how a locust ought to behave. Excellent playing my part. Okay. Now I can trade masks with the Moon Moth. Now I can visit the house of the Chief Geometer. Now I can bring... Wait, where are the, where are the honey cakes? Why is there no option for honey cakes? That's weird. Why did it just suddenly disappear? Okay, don't go, I guess. To visit the temple. Because once again, leave a respectful token of offering. Now, can I do the honey cakes? There we go, bring two honey cakes. Okay, now let's visit the side of the face, I think. Yeah, unlock to visit your mask four. You have four. Perfect. Let's go. Okay. 
<laughs> Push a visiting bat off the stone chin. That's what they meant by bats die. Unfortunately, I'm too expertise, apparently, to actually do that option. I need to have no more than four, and I have six. Deface the stone with new markings? Oh my god. Offer instructions to the frog that found its way up here. Hmm. I do feel like that's the sort of thing the moth would do. 24%? Ugh. 49? Not bad. I kind of want to just go inside, though. Let's just go inside. Wait a minute. Is this... I think this is different than before. Because before, I did not, like, go in with a procession of people. You climb up along the side of the flourishing's cheek, following a staircase of worn steps. You don't remember the path being this difficult before. The entry, when you come to it, is plugged with a substance fibrous as spider silk, but slick and waxy to the touch. Is this new? Does it grow here? Do they clear it away every year? Is it a form of security? But it doesn't yield to your hand. What the hell? Okay, that's different. Well, ooh, let's go there once again. Let's offer instructions to the frog that found its way up here. Let's hope I didn't fail. Um, I failed. Attended by some awkwardness. You tell the frog a partially true story about how this face was carved. It replies with questions. Detailed, astute, scholarly questions about who the original people were who inhibited, inhabited the island and whether the present citizens are their descendants. And if not, where the original inhabitants might have gone. It hasn't learned the role of stupid credulity at all. Caught off guard like this, you have a hard time answering its questions smoothly. You part with irritations on both sides. Hmm. Ah, that's it. That's the end of it. Damn. I keep losing terror, though. Hmm. What a strange place. I don't... I... Do I want to stay around here and do that again? I don't know. I'm not sure what I could do differently. I mean, I could play the role of the bat, I suppose. But I don't want to risk getting pushed off a cliff. Hmm. I mean, I've got plenty of fuel and supplies. I could do it. Let's do one more round. I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking it'd be no problem to get to the Isle of Cats this episode, but my God, I've gone down here, down here, and up here, and then that's it. It's almost been an hour already. <laughs> How does my boat even make this movement? I don't think engines can do this. It's like I've got propellers on the side of my ship. Okay. Do I want to go with the locust again? I mean, I went with the frog before and it worked out really well, but I doubt it's going to do the same thing this time. I really don't want to be the bat. I'm scared. I'm not going to be the bat. Let's be the frog. Let's visit the library this time. Let's do something stupid. Oh yeah, I can look for books about the ritual in the ear. Maybe that'd help me understand what's going on with it. Let's do that. It doesn't exactly fit my role, but I don't care. Scroll after scroll. 
The ritual is listed yearly for dozens, perhaps hundreds of years. Each ritual records which citizens cleared the door for entry, and which masks were present in the procession. There are references, oblique but suggestive, that the ritual began long after the ear was built, when the new people came to visage. But why they came, and what happened to the old people, is not recorded. And there is never any record about what was said inside the ear. Wait, what? <laughs> That's the end? Okay. Alrighty then. Well, I think I'm just going to end it there. I've spent enough time here. Spend so much time that I don't really have time to go to the Isle of Cats without this episode becoming over an hour long. Visage is just such a fascinating place. Very bizarre. There's obviously a lot of stuff you can do here. I just don't know what to do to make stuff happen. Mysterious. Anyway, I'm really happy I finally went back to Port Carnelian and got that stuff entered into my spreadsheet. And of course, now I have a quest to actually go back there from Adam's Way, so I've made some good progress advancing the storylines down here in the south. Which is good, because it's been a very long time since I've been to Adam's Way or Port Carnelian. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I will go to the Isle of Cats.